Hello and welcome back to another Elite Code problem. Today we're going to be doing problem number 348, Design Tic-Tac-Toe, and it's the uh, premium Elite Code problem of the week. So I did do the problem of the day today. It was an easy problem, and so this one's going to be a little bit tougher. So let's take a read and let's try to make the optimal solution for this one. It's not going to be too difficult. So assume the following rules are for Tic-Tac-Toe. I'm assuming most people know how to play Tic-Tac-Toe. Move is guaranteed to be valid and is placed on an empty block. Once a winning condition is reached, no more moves are allowed. The player who succeeds in placing n of their marks in a horizontal, vertical, or diagonal wins the game. Implement it. So you create the board and then you move. And it's pretty straightforward. We're just going to go through this example. It's just like a normal tic-tac-toe I'm assuming most people played. So first we make an n by n board. So let's just say we make a board like this. In this example, it's a 3 by 3. Normal tic-tac-toe is played in 3 by 3. But in this actual problem, we are going to implement it up to n by n. And so player 1 is going to be x's, and player 2 is going to be zeros. So we make a board, and then the moves go as follows. So it's going to go 0, 0, and let's just mark these columns and rows just so we know where, where to go. Okay, and so 0, 0, 1. So remember, player 1 is going to be x's, and player 2 is going to be zeros. Okay, and then we are returning a tie if there is no win yet, so right now we would return tie. And in order to have a win, you'd have to have you'd have to have the entire row or the entire column or the diagonal of whatever thing you're putting. So you'd have to have three X's here, three X's here, or three X's like this. Okay. And so player two goes on zero two. So that's gonna be over here in this picture. So there's still no one one. Now player one goes here. Okay, player two goes here. And if you do know a tic-tac-toe, actually, um, oh yeah, so this would be the actual optimal move here. So he goes here, and then now he can win uh, regardless of wherever the other guy goes, if he ever played before. And so now he the the next player goes here, and now so you go here, and then you won the game. And the way you won the game is like this. And so let's just think of how we would have a solution, and let's think of the optimal solution. So what we could do that would be pretty straightforward, right, is anytime we place a piece, so let's say we place a piece here, we just check the current row and the column of the piece and we see if it's on one of the diagonals. So let's say we place an X here, we just check is for this row is every single is every single every single thing an X? Yeah, okay, return true. And then if it's not, let's check this column, is every single thing an X? Yeah, okay, return true. Or or not. So we check every single um, we check the row, we check the column, and we also, so by the way, for an n by n game, no matter what the n by n is, there are only two valid diagonals, and they go through the center. So it's going to be this diagonal here and this diagonal here. If you make a 4x4 four four or whatever, I believe this holds true, right? So let's just check here real quick. So let's say we make a 4x4, four 2, 3, just double check here. Right, so there are only two diagonals, this diagonal and this diagonal. You have to have diagonals that have four, that have n number of um, squares, which would be this diagonal here, 1, 2, 3, 4, this diagonal here, 1, 2, 3, 4. Any other diagonal is too short to be a winning diagonal. So that's going to make this problem a little bit easier. And so let's just figure out real quick, how do we figure out if something is on a diagonal? Well, I don't know if you've seen any of my other problems, but there are tricks for a left and a right diagonal. So for this left and a right diagonal, if we if we actually look at it, right, so let's just look at it. So you can see that every single square in this left diagonal, the row equals a column, right? So 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2. And this will be true for no matter how no matter what the n is. So 4 by 4, 5 by 5, whatever, it'll always start at 0, 0, and then it will end at n, n. And so that's how we can quickly check if we're on the left diagonal, if row equals column. And then on the right diagonal, it's kind of also pretty straightforward to figure that out. So we start at 2, 0, then we're at 1, 1, then we're at 0, 2. So you can see that the row and the column are always adding up to the same thing, right? They add up to 2 here, they add up to 2 here, they add up to 2 here. And so for this right diagonal, in order to check if it's the right diagonal, row plus column is always going to equal n minus 1. So if n is 3 here, then this will be 0, 2, 0, 2, and so on. And we can even, we can look at this for, let's just do a 2 by 2 real quick. And then, so let's say this is 2 by 2, 0, 1, 0, 1, n is 2. So these add up to 1, these add up to 1, and 
n is 2, so row plus column right equals n minus 1. And you can see that these other ones add up to something else. So this adds up to 2, this adds up to 0. So every other every other square won't add up to this. Uh, won't add up to this. So that's how we check both diagonals. Now the problem with this solution is anytime we put down an x or an o, we have to check the entire row and the entire column. And so what would that be the time complexity? And we have to check the diagonal. The time complexity of that is going to be 3n technically or 4n or whatever, but it would be it'd be big O of n. Right? And so they're asking for uh, could you do better than O of n squared per move? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess that would be better than O of n squared, technically, right? Because we're just putting down, we're just putting down one piece, and then we're checking the row and the column. So that I think that would be not O of n squared. That would be O of n. But I think we can even do this even better, and so we can actually have an O of one solution, I believe. And so, yeah, I'm not I'm not entirely sure why that's of n squared because yeah, I'm pretty sure if you just place and then you just check the row and the column, um, you you just go down the entire row and the entire column. That's going to be O of n. So the better way to do this would be, well, we're going to use a little trick. And so instead of x's and o's, remember. Some, for someone to win, they have to have the entire column. So instead of x's and o's, let's do something else. Let's have a hash map for for the rows and the columns, and we only need a value for the diagonals because there's only one diagonal. So let's just have a hash map of like rows, right? Let's have a hash map of columns, and then they're, by, for keys, they're going to have rows and columns, and they're going to be initialized to zeros. And instead of giving people x's and o's, let's do this. Let's give player 1 the number negative 1, and let's give player two the number one. And so, what would this look like? And how would we how would we easily figure out if someone won? Well, let's let's do this exact same thing, but let's go with negative ones and ones. So we put in a let's just start player one's negative one. Okay, and then anytime we put in a number, we just ask ourselves: Is our current row? So whatever this hash map is, row zero, does it add up to the, sorry, so we take the absolute value of whatever's in here, and we say abs of this, does that equal n minus 1, right? You, you could technically make n, uh, no, sorry, it wouldn't be n minus 1, it would be n. And so let's see what that, let's see if we do that, what happens, right? So we check the row, we, we get whatever value is in there after we update it with this value. And this would be, and this check is O of 1, right? We're just updating a value O of 1, and we're checking one value O of 1. Then we do the same thing with a column. And then we check, is it on a diagonal? Then we do the same thing with a diagonal. And if the row or the column or the diagonal, the absolute value of that adds up to n, then we just return the current player we're on, and we say that player won. So let's try to walk through this with that solution. So we put in a negative 1 here. We check this row and this column. And let's just say these values start as zeros, right? But you can pretend they start at zeros because it's going to be the same thing because the, the sum of these are going to be zeros to begin with. Anyway, so we check this row and this column, and obviously the this row was never is not going to add up to n right now. It's going to add up to 1. This column is going to add up to 1. This diagonal is going to add up to 1 when we do the absolute value. Okay, well now let's put in a 0. And remember, for 0, we're going to use 1 instead. Okay, well for one same thing, right? There is no win here. We need we need the absolute value of one row or one column or something to add up to n, and we can do that by having this hash map. So we don't actually have to go through the thing and count it up. We can just look up the value directly in the hash map, and we're going to update it, right? So row zero, when we put in this negative one, is going to be negative one, but then when we add this one, we're going to add a one, and so that's going to be zero. And then for the column column 0 is going to be negative 1, and column 2 is going to be 1. Okay, so let's keep going. So we put a negative 1 here. Obviously, we, we know we're never going to have a solution at, until there's at least three numbers, so we can just keep putting in numbers. But let's see what that looks like. So we put in a third number here. We put in a fourth number here. Now let's check, do we have a valid solution here? So we do have three numbers, but this diagonal, the sum of that, even even with an absolute value, is going to be it's going to be uh, 1, right? So it's going to be negative 2 plus 1, and then we take the absolute value. So that's going to be 
the absolute value of negative 1, which is going to be 1. So there's still going to be no solution here, and there aren't any three numbers anywhere else. Okay, so now we put in negative 1 here. Uh, is there a solution here? No, the absolute value of this is going to be 1. Okay, now we, where's our next one? I think it's here. Yeah, so 0 here. Okay, do we have a solution now? No, the absolute value of this is going to be 1 as well, right? Negative 2 plus 1 and then absolute value. Okay, and now finally I think you have a move here. And so now we're going to update this row, so this row 2. And what's the absolute value of this? Well, the absolute value of this is the absolute value of negative 3, which will be 3. And so now our when we look up this index after we updated the value, now 3 is n. So whenever our value does equal n, we just simply return. The easiest way to do this is we just return whatever player we were on. So if we were on player 1, we would return player 1. If we were on player 2, we would return player 2. And this works for player 1 and player 2, so you don't even have to know what player you're on. You can just simply return whatever player. And all we have to do is just mark whatever number we're putting in. So hopefully that's straightforward. We're going to be we're going to have this hash map for the rows, hash map for the columns, and just a value for the left diagonal and right diagonal. And every time we put in a value, we just check is there a winner by taking the absolute value of the of the value in that uh, in that row, column, and diagonal. Okay, so let's try to code this up, and then we we can worry about time and space complexity. So remember, we're going to have a couple things here. So self dot we're going to have a rows hash map, right? So Let's make this this. We're gonna have a columns hash map. We're gonna have a left diagonal, and that's just gonna be an int, so we're gonna make that zero and a right diagonal. And we're gonna have a n n value, so let's just call that uh, maybe rows or something. No, let's just call it n. Whatever. Okay, let's see if that's fine. Should be. Okay. So now let's make this move. Okay. So if, like I said, we're going to be putting in ones and negative ones. And so what we need to do is we need to check what player we're on and then see what we need to put in. So let's just do this. So let's say number equals uh, zero. Let's initialize it. And then we can just say number equals uh, negative one if player equals one else number equals um, or number equals uh, one, right? Yeah, okay. So now we're going to be putting in negative one if player one is one. Otherwise, if, if it's player two, we're going to be putting in one. Okay, so now we need to update the row, the column, the left and the right diagonal. So let's do that. So self.rows row plus equals number, and we're, we like it doesn't matter what player we're on, this code should work for both because we're getting the number here. So this is all going to be the same, so self dot columns. And also you don't have to worry about, I tested this already, you don't have to worry about like resetting this uh, this rows and columns or whatever. Once there's a winner, the program just ends, so you don't have to worry about resetting it like you would in a real tic-tac-toe, which you could try to, that's like a good, also a good uh, intro to system design question you could do, where you can actually try to design tic-tac-toe and you can make like rounds and reset the score and things like that. Okay, so self dot columns call plus equals number. Now remember we have to check if it's in the left diagonal, so how do we do that? Well, the left diagonal, the rows equals the column, so if row equals equals call, we need to update the left diagonal. And then remember that for the other diagonal, the row plus the column is going to equal 1 minus 1, so here it would be like 0, 2, 1, 1, and so on. And so if row plus call equals self dot n minus one, then we need to update the right diagonal. Now we simply need to check the row, the column, and both diagonals to see is their absolute value total score equal to equal to n, and if it is, that means the entire line is filled with ones or negative ones. And then and then we don't care which one it is, we can just simply return the player because whatever whatever we just put in made it win, so it's going to be the player that's going to win. So we can do that. Uh, so if self.rows 
row. Uh, so this, so actually, let's let's code up this code this up in another way. So let's just max this. We can just max all of these values. So we're going to take the row, the column, the left and the right diagonal. We're going to take the absolute value and we're going to max it. And then the, if if any one of these is equal to n, then the max is going to be equal to n. So we're just going to do that instead of checking a bunch of ifs. So max self dot rows row, uh, and we can just copy this code a few times. So it's going to be self dot columns call. Okay. Abs. So this should be self dot left ag. Okay. Self dot right diag. K equals self dot n. Then we just simply return whatever player made that happen. So we return player here. Otherwise we return tie. So let's see what happens here. Unmatched. Okay, let's see what we got. Uh, self. Okay, so I think I see the problem here. Uh, so this needs to, whoops. This is not that. This needs to match with this. Okay, let's see if I got rid of some of the right thing. Okay, I did. Number equals one if player uh, I think that I'm not actually sure if this. Okay, there we go. So that's how you do that. Okay, so now let's, let's try to submit. Okay, so now let's think of our time and space complexity here, and we're gonna think of the time and space complexity for each one of these, right? So, so remember our goal was to make it better than, um n squared moves per operation. Okay, so let's think about this. So time, and let's just think for it. So for the init, it's gonna be big O of one because we're initializing everything to nothing. Now let's think for the move. So we are updating this. This is O of one. 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 This is O of 1 because it's it's O of 4, which would be O of 1, constant time. Um, yeah, so all of these should be O of 1. So this should be O of 1 because we're doing constant time lookups for everything. Okay, and space. So this is where we... And, and this is like, if you, if you get asked, um, you know, how can you improve time? So the original solution, you can technically do this, right, with having O of 1 space complexity, but the problem is you would have to iterate through every single row in the column. And so th this is a better solution because we are sacrificing some time or some space, but we're also making O of one time. Usually, this, th maybe this one's kind of close, but if you have something like n squared time and O of one space, you'd rather have n, n time and n space, you know, try to have them like close to each other. Okay, so anyway, so space. So we have rows, we have columns, we have left diag or right diag. So rows can be... Rose is actually only one value. So actually, no, I think our space should be of one anyway. No, actually, no, 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 no never mind. So row, no, yeah, so rows, for, there's a key for every single row, and then for columns, there's a column for every single column. So if this is n by n, then space would be 2n, right? Because um, row would have n rows, and then column would have two n columns, so this would be O of n. And then left diag and right diag is integer, so that's constant, this is constant. Okay, so that's that. All right, and I think that's it for this problem. So hopefully you like this problem, and if you did, uh, please like and subscribe to the video. It really helps grow the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.